Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. This is the big one. This is what we're all waiting for. Ten Hag's press conference covering live in 15 minutes. Of course, we're talking about FA Cup and the high-flying Liverpool. How are we going to beat them? Who is available? Will Rasmus Hoyland start? There's a lot of questions. And of course, Mark Nurse is going to join me here as well. Please, let's continue this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't. Let's do this. Are you ready to rumble? <laughs> Yo, 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 welcome back. TGIF, thank God it's Friday. How are we all doing this lovely Friday afternoon? Of course, we're here gathered, uh, not for marriage, not for funeral, but can be both, to be honest. We're here to talk about Jurgen Klopp versus Ten Hag. And we all saw the battering yesterday, Slavia Prague. They are in form, even if they're playing the kids. They seem never to lose this season, even with the kids playing like, you know, amazing. I just don't know how they do it. And of course, we are going to listen to Ten Hag, who is available. Will we have a chance with Rasmus Hoyland coming back? Will, uh, you know, Aaron Van Bissaka play as well? We will have a back four consisting of Potentially, Aaron Van Bissaka, you know, Johnny Evans, Varan, and I don't know. I don't know. Will it be a Dallo? Right, we'll see. But there's a lot of questions that we're going to listen to today because the players had one week off. Liverpool played yesterday, as we know, so they will have two days rest. Will fatigue set into the league? What matters for the Liverpool? Something's got to drop. Are they going for the Europa League or are they absolutely going for the Premier League? There's a lot of things that we're going to unpack today. And I'm really looking forward to hear good questions for these journalists today. You know, tactically speaking, um, are you going to line up pragmatic at Old Trafford or are you going to go for it? Because let's face it. You know, FA Cup is the only trophy that we have left to win. And by the way, we all saw the draw in the quarterfinals uh, for the uh, Champions League. And it looks like, it, it absolutely looks like it's an exciting one. Real Madrid versus City. What do you feel about that one? And Arsenal playing Bayern Munich. Harry Kane versus, versus Saka. <laughs> That's going to be a very interesting. So I just have a gut feeling that all the British teams will advance into the semis. We might even see a, a full British uh, final. Who knows? But one thing is for sure as well, peeps. One thing, since West Ham, and they beat the, the, the German team yesterday, Freiburg, it's uh, pretty much nailed on that fifth gives you Champions League as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, I would take a Champions League, but still finishing fifth is not a merit in a way. But uh, anyway, how are you feeling? How are you doing? What are you drinking today? Smash that like button. There is about what? How many of you are watching right now? 30 tuned in. Where are you? It's lunchtime and I'm having, as per usual, me double espresso. Good up. Big up for you. I see Yale Malmin, one of our members is here saying Arsenal. Uh, versus Bayern Munich. Very important for Arsenal to win this game and knock out Bayern Munich out. But the thing is, Bayern Munich is not so good. And, and I, I also say that Real Madrid hasn't been that great coming into this run of fixtures. But you know what? Bayern and and, and Real, they always, you know, they, they, they are the teams that will never give up, right? So, but I'm also impressed by Atletico Madrid, to be honest. So I, I put my bet on an Atletico in the finals as well. But let me know what you think. Um, yeah, man, AM versus Dortmund, City versus Real Madrid. Now it's game time. Le last game, PSG and Barcelona. Will PSG ever win something? I mean, they invested heavily in this squad, and uh, the Global Trotter squad, and they haven't won anything as of yet. Maybe this is the time for PSG. Maybe this is this one song for actually Kylian Mbappe before he goes to um, Real. I mean, who knows? Who knows? It's, it's wide open. But I certainly don't want City to win another Champions League in a row. 100% no. Uh, it would be something if Arsenal could clinch it, actually. Wow. Imagine. Imagine that. If Arsenal wins the league this season and the Champions League, we will never 
you know, <laughs> the, the Arsenal, the Gunners fans will never give us a, a minute to breathe, to be honest. But it is what it is. And, and just sad to see, sad state of affairs to see that we should be in this competition, but we are not. And we are out of it. So basically, FA Cup is the only trophy we can win and finish strong in the league. And I believe we can do that. Basically, if you saw Villa yesterday, they're not that great, right? Uh, Villa is playing, who they're playing? As, they're playing West Ham. West Ham on Sunday as well. So I think that West Ham is going to do a number because West Ham is playing home. And the, West Ham is everyone's bogey, bogey team. And you know how they play, right? You know how they play. So good evening to you. Uh, Jamie Wayne, what she's saying here? Uh, should should got kudos. That guy is unreal. Oof, that goal from kudos. Wow. I mean, I think it was the 4-0 goal when he actually drove a solo, like in a 60 meters by himself. What a goal. You know, reload record, what you're saying here. 100% reload record. What does that mean, Can Explain yourself. What is reload record for you? Uh, Villa versus Lille, what you're saying here. I hope they would have forgotten Fiorentina. Yes. Kudos is madness, man. What a player. What a player. Anyway, big up for all of you for coming in. We are about, uh, let's see, 10 minutes away from the uh, from the actually press conference, which we're going to cover live. And Kenny is drinking coffee. So I'm also drinking coffee, mate. I am having me double espresso as per usual. Mm. Oh, I love my coffee. There's nothing like a, what is it, 10th cup of coffee of the day. <laughs> yeah. Morning, Mick, Dark Crow, Danny B. Morning. How are you doing? Morning to you. Uh, what's Ramos saying here? Uh, Ten Haggis. Oh, I love that name. Is he Scottish? Haggis. Ten Haggis bench Kudus for Anthony and Ajax. Uh, Kudus was Ahmed and Ajax back then. Hey, you can't take a life, but you can't take a freedom. Yay, 100%. Uh, what are you saying here? Yalla, Villa did bash Ajax 4-0. Jesus, the downfall of Ajax, man. What the hell is going on? Ever since Ten Hag left Ajax, let's face it, they've just fallen down to the abyss. They are just a team of shadow when of themselves i mean basically ten hag was so important for that ajax team and then tell you ten hag by the way if you look at it, it's brought in a lot of youth even in manchester united you know we've been blinded by the light but they actually introduced a couple of youth from the academy to play in the first team so big up to ten hag as well and anyway anyway mocha for you man Woohoo! Mick, it's KJ Suntrack. Oh, I don't know what KJ Suntrack is. What is KJ Suntrack? Maybe Mark can tell me what KJ Suntrack is. Mark, what is KJ Soundtrack? KJ Soundtrack? <clears throat> His soundboard, he's meaning, you know, the boom booms boom. that KJ drops. And he has these little, you know, these short intros that he's, he talks with, like people saying, please. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have, I'm not that advanced because we're streaming in StreamYard and StreamYard is quite basic. So I haven't really figured out how to incorporate, but Poppy has that too. You know, you know, get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hang on. Uh, Ramo is having a good point. Ed. Like, I just lost also Van de Saar and Overmars, and that was such an important trio, Mark. Yeah, they did a lot for that. For that club, you know, I mean, together as a unit, they had the same direction. They beat from the same drum. They you know they were like a band, the Ten Hag band. You the know Ten Hag I mean? band. Yeah, the, you know on what bass. I mean? he was the lead singer. The, the other yep. two was doing the the background yep. music. Overmars was the, the bass. The like he was the bass. Sure everything worked. And Overmars was the bass player then. And, yeah. And, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Van der Sar the drummer was the is, drummer, is, right? is is always the, you know the big man, Van der Sar. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the double bass drums like the. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. <laughs> big up, big up, Jamie. I missed you too, man. I mean, we we've been a little bit busy. Uh, of course, I I was away celebrating my uh, wedding anniversary. And you know what? When Manchester United is on playing one game a week, there's not much to report on. So I don't want to force feed, force feed like to do their you know, live shows every day. There's nothing to talk about, right? So it's better off to, you know, to to go live when you actually have to say. And I've been focusing more on doing quality videos and stuff like that. So yeah. It's just good to take a break. And plus, uh, after this, it's international break for two weeks. 100%. And, you know, and you know, it's always good to have the international break. It makes it a little bit easier. It always gives you, you know, that time. You know, it gives you that that period of, like, rest, respite, I should say. You know rest what pause. I mean? Rest pause. Yeah. And, and like, Manchester United, we, we, we need that as a fan base and as a team right now at the moment. It's a lot of heavy situations and news it's 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 a bit 
dark, to be fair. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> yeah, t- tell me, Mark. There is no one day where there is nothing about written about Manchester United to discuss. I mean, when there is nothing to discuss, media actually creates stories. And, you know, regarding everything that's been going on, like, you know, Samuel Lockhurst is Samuel Lockhurst. He's got to work for the Hollywood Insider. You know what I mean. And then he's Mark Ogden. Mad. Yeah, he's still mad. And Mark Ogden and, you know, what's his other thing? And Rob Dawson has been banned from the presses. So, are the ones that are leading the um, the agenda, like the Ten Hag agenda, right? We, you know, right. you can put two and two together. You can't. You, you see what's going on, right? It's yeah, funny. It's, eh? a tough, it's a tough one, Mick, you know? And, and if you look at it from the perspective of they put out their news and soon you never know, they might got to have egg on their faces and they might have to be, you know, retracting some statements that they've previously made well, because their sources have not been sourcing recently. So... Let's see how it goes. And for the, it's a message to the fan base, really. You know, guys, be patient. You know what I mean? The media yeah, is yeah, going to yeah. be the media. They're going to print stories, reckless stories. It's going to be upsetting. It's going to mess with your mind. But you have to look at it from the perspective of sometimes the media isn't right. They're just, you know, no, stirring up no, 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 contention. No. Um, I did a video last week when I covered that Tin Hag's job is safe. And Slow Sports News, everyone was reporting it yesterday. They're covering what Ornstein was saying. But I picked it up last week when Ornstein had an interview and said Ten Hag's job is far, far, far near from being even discussed because they are focusing on getting, like, you know, the top management above him first, like, you know, the director of football, the head of recruitment and everything else. And they will just uh, sort of address it in the summer. And, um, you know, of course, he will be judged by the results, but they also acknowledge that, you know what, you haven't had that support. You, you know, we, we know what you can achieve. So will he stay? Will he not? At the end of the day, if you're going to appoint the best class, you know, what you've been doing all the way up from the manager, then you certainly need to sort of appoint the best class manager as well, right? To make it make sense, right? Uh, everyone was on the Deserby wagon. Deserby absolutely got smacked against Roma. He's out. You know, I, I don't see any other manager at the moment that is out there other than Javi Alonso or a Zidane, right? I mean, I don't even think Javier Alonso would be a good idea right now. I mean, if we, if we look football. at the situation and, and judge from Ten Hag, Javier Alonso is a very good coach. You know, don't yeah. I'm not taking that away from him. His performance in the Bundesliga this season is breaking a, a 10-year title-winning streak from Matt Bayern Munich. So that's pretty amazing. A team that has, for me, as a fan of football, there's always been a, a heavyweight in the German game, but they've never really won anything. You know, so yeah. it's like... He's bringing them into the four. And I feel like Xabi Alonso is, is probably going to stay at the club for one more season because I feel like to establish himself as a manager, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. one of his career is going to be better for him to go again, take them to the, maybe a quarterfinals of, of the UCL and probably try to win the league again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That reminds me of a rock song. I, I always associate the things with music, right? You know that song with Whitesnake, Here I Go Again. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm sure know where I've been. Here I go again on my own. <laughs> going down the only road that we ever known. Glory, glory, Manchester United. We can only look yeah, forward. You know. I mean, yeah, it's been a torrid season, 100%. We talked about a lot of injuries we talked about no style of play and if you look at it you know ten hack style of play is actually to play like you know a high press right to win the ball back high up in the pitch but you really haven't had the players to do so right bruno kind of sure. half pressing rashford's not pressing who nobody's pressing up the front so instead we're pray, playing this pragmatic football man marking which hasn't really worked so i would say that he's playing safe he's just playing to you know get results What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, my, at the same time, I think he's doing a bit of both. I think he's trying to instill some principles while trying to get results. I feel like, yeah, some of the players aren't doing their best, but, you know, it's also a highlight that some of the players might not fit the mold. You know no, what I mean? Don't. And I feel like fans no. take it the wrong way when they see some of the players not performing well. They say, well... It's oh, the no. manager, the way the manager set them up that they're not performing well. But at no, least no, no, no. Well, day... Everyone, everyone that's educated know it. Like you know, it, it is. You don't. It's it's a mismatch of players that don't belong in this team. There's no cohesion, and they're used to playing counterattacking football. They're not used to play possession based football. That's it. But guys, anyway, big up Jamie Wayne. I can see you. You are coming back with the venom. Peace, love, and bananas for your birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Jamie. How are you Happy doing? Belated and birthday, Jamie. See, 
the press conference is about to start. Uh, so let's in. see. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it started. <laughs> it started. It's about to start, people. So get into your questions here as well. Let's. The presser. Liverpool, but it's now time for Eric Ten Hag. Can everyone hear it? Media. Thumbs up. <laughs> Welcome everybody to our press conference for Welcome, our FA Cup um, game against Liverpool on Sunday. The first section is embargoed until 1.30 p.m. <coughs> uh, let's get going with Simon Pitch. Uh, hi, Eric. Um, what is the latest first of all with Rasmus Hoyland, Harry Maguire and Aaron wan Get in there. Well, we had a good week. Um, so all the players you mentioned, they returned on the pitch, um, partly in the start of the week. And today we had a session and they were all training. Good stuff. So they're available for... So. Um, I think. <laughs> we have <laughs> mind games. one session. We have, of course, we have to see how they recover uh, from this uh, tomorrow. But uh, it looks uh, good. Is there anybody good. else back or unavailable? Um, yeah, it's um, so Tom Heaton um, is back as well. Um, Tom Heaton also was very was very good. Uh, Mason Mount trained also whole week uh, with us first uh, part of the week uh, also partly, but then also we had some uh, full sessions with us. So yeah, it's looking good. Good stuff. Eric, are some games bigger than others? I mean, this is Simon a standalone Stone. match. It's an FA Cup tie against oh. Manchester United biggest rivals is it the chance to make a statement to show that you can compete with these teams that you can take them on at home and beat them um, it's yes uh, some games are bigger than others there's definitely and i think manchester united liverpool that's always a big game but especially when it's quarter final fa cup um uh, we're really looking forward um, it's a, it's a special game absolutely I mean, what would you say to the fans? Obviously, there'll be a lot of Liverpool fans there because there's bigger away allocation, but it's important that the fans yeah. get behind the team. Yeah, but of course, to the fans, they see it as a, as a very big game and they are very eager for us to win this. And I'm sure they will ride behind us. And as you mentioned, there are more <laughs> Liverpool fans, so they have to, to be really loud and to to and to support us that, that we had them oh yeah but i'm convinced they will do that absolutely how um how important is it that you produce a performance because your players all season have been inconsistent liverpool have the momentum at the moment what sort of performance do you need from your players this weekend yeah but i think um in such, such games we always achieve very good performances um so yeah, we had our setbacks, we had our um, our lows, definitely. But I don't think um, in any um, so really high-rated game we had our lows. Then we were always uh, in top form. So and I'm convinced we will be on Sunday as well. You can't afford a low on Sunday, can you? Simple as that. You can't. Well, if you want to, if you, if you want to win, and we want to win, and uh, you play against a good team because then you are you are right. They have they are very consistent. Um, yeah, then we need our best to beat them. And how impressed have you been with Liverpool this season? Yeah, well, I said they are very, very consistent and they perform, of course, very well. They, they, they caught in the results, and especially I think from, say, around the Christmas into January, February, uh, um, yeah, they play very good football, very good performances, so and very good results. Thank you. Eric, if I just move away from the FA Cup a little bit, the uh, Champions League draw and uh, Europa League draws have just been made. You're obviously not in that competition. Does it does it frustrate you, or does that motivate you to try and reach that goal come the end of the season? Um, of course, it motivates uh, again to be part of that, and yeah, we know why. And so yeah, we analyze that. We left it behind us, we, and so we know the reasons why we are not there. And but we can't change it anymore and uh, but we want to be part of it next season so uh, uh, so we will do and give everything to achieve this hi and 
David Moyes said ahead of this game 10 years ago that Liverpool were the favourites coming to Old Trafford. Would you say they're the favourites tomorrow or would you always be adamant that Manchester United are the favourites in a home game? Oh, it's a difficult one because um, I, I never think about this, who's favourite. Uh, it's, it, it, it starts on zero and make sure uh, we are ready. And I don't think about True. the uh, opposition. I respect them. I respect every opposition. Uh, but it's about uh, make it our game. And um, yeah, it's about this, uh, where we know where the strengths are, uh, but also where the weaknesses are. And it's about that our team is in the best. It's about this. Hi, Eric. Um, it's been a difficult season, obviously, in the Premier League, going out of Europe, injuries you've had. But do you feel that a victory on Sunday could almost be a catalyst and transform the season and give you the momentum to to maybe push for that Champions League place in the last 10 games as well? Now, what <clears throat> we actually, we never got to turn around <laughs> so far. And we had our opportunities, but we, we missed the opportunities. Yeah, Sunday we have um, another good opportunity and to, to get the momentum. Uh, and, uh, and I think the, the, the players, the team um, uh, showed lately, uh, I think from January on, we are in, in a very good series of games with a lot of wins. And so they can have the belief they can do it. And now we have to take the momentum. And that is also what I feel when I train with them uh, during uh, and around the games, uh, that they have that uh, belief. They have us, um, uh, so good confidence, uh, good spirit is in uh, the team and uh, go and play and get the turnaround, yeah. Chris. Hi, Eric. Um, you said that in general this season you've been quite good in the big games. Some fans weren't happy with the approach to the derby, even though you did score first. Do you think people have to understand and realise that you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with teams like this and, and hope to win? So it's, it's always about two teams and so the intention would be never that deep. It was also the game um, when you score first. And uh, of course, then the opponent, the opposition uh, uh, will take more risk. That is what they did. I think similar, for instance, against Villa, uh, where we've had a very good start. And after we scored uh, the first goal, they have to come. And then uh, we know, uh, uh, I think we are very good when there is space in the back of the defending line uh, with our players. And I think we showed against City, uh, um, I think it was really small margins uh, when we should have got that second goal. And even after the first, after the 1-1, one, one, we shoot uh, with Garnacho. We had a great opportunity to make it 2-1. <laughs> and so that was really, uh, really small. And then we could have won this game. And yeah, so uh, that will be also our intention for uh, Sunday. Yeah, we will go and be brave and go forward where it's possible. Uh, but also we know uh, when there's space in the back of their defending line and we can explore it. Uh, but we have to get to that point uh, uh, to outplay them, to get the balls there. Um, and that, that demands a good strategy uh, in, in the key moments and in the head moments of football. But you've experienced what a clock team can do if you, if you, if you open up too much, yeah? I, I, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last question in this section. <laughs> Hi, Eric. Um, there's been a little bit of speculation about Marcus Rashford's future this week. Um, you've spoken about FFP before. Those rules benefit clubs who yeah. sell academy graduates. Obviously, Chelsea have, have done something similar. Do you ever envisage a situation where the club might look at Marcus and say that as part of their overall transfer strategy, it's, it's a positive to sell Marcus because of what it could do to the overall financial situation? Oh, we didn't resign him last season for four years with the intention to to sell him no he should be part of this project hmm. and so uh, that's just uh, it's not uh, so a subject we talk about great to hear from there you go people that's it there was a interesting press conference mark i mean I like the last question, you know what I mean, I, I, regarding Rashford's future. And, of course, you would extend this contract for another four years because you don't want to lose the value at the end of the day. This is how it works in the transfer market, right? So if you didn't sort of re-sign his contract, his contracts would be run out and they would not get that as much money as 
as they want. So his transfer market value is worth about 75 million euros, and he's definitely 100 million sell-on right now if they decide to go that route. Mark, so what did you take uh, from this press conference in terms of key takeaways, Mark? You're on mute. <laughs> You're on mute. Sorry about that. Firstly, I, I would just say that yeah, there were some good questions and then there were some a bit, I think, very distinct. Yeah. You know, I, I don't like that Matt. one of the questions that they said, I think it was the second to last question or the third to last question that the guy posed. I think, like Yali was saying, it's not really a nice question. It's pretty nasty. But I think what it is is that they're trying to say, well, okay, are you a good coach? Possibly. Is this yeah, team yeah, a yeah. good team? Possibly. Is this club able to compete with clubs like City and Liverpool? Maybe not. You know, but Eric Ten Hag, yeah. for me... He was answering mostly honestly. I feel like there's not m much much you can argue with the responses that he gave. I like how he answered about the Rashford question because at the end of the day, he said we. You know what I mean? Mm. We. So when he says we, you know it's not him. So when people say, well, you know, Ten Hag decides everything because of his veto, well, that, that statement alone proves mm. A hundred percent, hundred percent doesn't do it. So I mean, journalists are very smart how they uh, mask the question. If you can't read between the lines, what they are after, right? Uh, in terms of, he said we cannot compete against City. It's impossible, right? Because we know that City has the best squad in the world and the bundle some talents and bench players, right? And then can you go toe to toe with Liverpool? Yeah, we can. Hundred percent, we can, right? This is, you know, you got to believe, uh, and. Yeah, I mean, of course, Liverpool, what they do best is set up traps. Like, you know, they like to press high and they have this never say die attitude. I'm pretty pissed off with Liverpool this season, to be honest, because they never lose. You know, <laughs> I'm irritated, like, because they might be one nil down and the final 85 minutes and then they put in the extra, you know, gear in, oh, like, no. you know, the, the press gear. And they've always been so lucky, like, you know, you know, last tick of the game, the win the game and stuff like that. This is what Manchester United used to do, if you remember, right? Yeah, it was, it was our thing. I mean, Fergie time is extra time. Extra time we, was Fergie time. Is it not the same thing? Like, when yeah. we say extra time, extra time is Fergie time. So, you know, I agree that they have that never say die attitude. We lost it, to be fair. Like, you know, and we should be the ones that have it the most. That's, that's our mantra. That's, what, that's where we came from. That's what the club is built on, from my perspective. Yeah, you know I, mean? I agree. I agree and with I... what Yali's saying. Yeah, like you know, certain questions what to get the manager to hang himself, right? Um, I don't, I don't really appreciate some certain questions there, like you know. Um, but in terms of uh, fitness, this is what we're here for. We want to understand who is available, right? And for me, it was clear in abundance that Mason Mount could be available for selection. Hoyland will be available for selection. Uh, I remember Saka available for selection, but he didn't say anything about uh, Harry Maguire, which was interesting. Uh, yeah, right? actually, yeah, he did say Harry. Did the he? First three of them were Harry Maguire, Luke, Harry Maguire, Juan Bissaka, and Luca then, Shaw. No, Luke, <laughs> not Luca Shaw. It was, it was it Luke Shaw? No, it's Hoyland. No, I'm trolling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say anything about about Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw is one for me that I was waiting to hear some information about, but. It, it seems like he's out, and maybe the reports that we've been hearing that he might be on his way in this summer window might be actually true. So I was I was happy that he said Mason Mount has actually been in training because for me, I'm one of the critical fans of Mason Mount, but at the same me time, too. I want to see what he can do. The biggest critical point for me is he's wearing the number seven and he hasn't played yeah, much yeah. games this season. So by the way, did you did you read uh, Lockhurst's? Um, there was a tweet this morning criticizing urging Mason Mount to give up his number seven shirt. Did you Bro, see that tweet? Disgraceful. I, I saw it, right? But you know what? You know, I mean, I kind of agree with, with him. But that, No, no, no. But that, that is kind of like, you know, this guy is clear and obvious what he's trying to do here. He's trying to fuel up the fan base. And that is, he's a shitster. He's a shitster. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, my, while I might agree with the number issue, on, on, I don't agree with the how he's using it. Like I feel like you could be mad that he's wearing the number seven, but I, but that's no nothing for you to put up and say. Well, look, let's get this guy out of here or something. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, and also like there was a tweet that he wasn't signed for footballing reason. We all knew that. Like, you know, he happened to be available in the summer. He's a poster boy, he's a pretty boy. Let's give him the number seven shirt. And he hasn't really played. So I'm excited to actually see Mason Mount in action. Let us finish strong with the, you know, um, he said we haven't even been able to turn it around as of yet. Did you notice mm -hmm. that uh, answer when he said that? Because that is actually reality. Because if you look at it, he hasn't really been able to play his strongest team this whole season. So he hasn't really been time had, had time to turn it around. There was a spell like, you know, in January, we, we basically lost two games. and But we haven't really played that good football. The the time we turned around was when Licha came back with Casemiro. And we had a little bit of a balance. And that didn't work out. And Luke shot, right? So if we look at the league table at the moment, right? We, we talked about this. It, I believe that Villa is going to bottle it because they're playing, they're playing in Europe as well, right? So I believe they're playing West Ham over the weekend. I think West Ham's going to do a number because West Ham's playing at home, right? Spurs, four tricky fixtures in a row. I mean, this, they're literally playing everyone. Like, you know, they're playing City, Arsenal, Arsenal Liverpool, and who else? Uh, Liverpool, Newcastle. Uh, Newcastle and Brighton. Newcastle, yeah, yeah, and Brighton. So they, I mean, who is to say it's not nailed on? And by the way, um, barring the results that happened yesterday, this gives the Manchester, you know, the Premier League, the English teams, the fifth spot in Champions League. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. So Pretty good show. The, there's a lot of things to look forward to. And are you afraid for this uh, weekend? I've seen a lot of people, they're not going to watch the game. They can't stand it. And I was like, why? You're why? A fan. Why? You're why you're a fan. Manchester United fan, right? Come on, you, we're not going to get slapped seven nil here, right? Come on. Um, I mean, the journalists, I feel like they're not doing justice to what to what United is this season. Like maybe last season we got we got slapped seven nil. We we held that. You know, we won one three two one or three one, and then we lost one seven nil. Yeah, yeah. and team, guess what? Already, Lockhurst is a Liverpool fan, so don't fall for it. What's the compost Murphy say? Already know that. Awesome. But also, we you know we went to the we went to the Anfield this season, and we got a we came away with a point. Yeah, yeah, we did. You know I mean? Yeah, true. They we come did. in. They come to Old Trafford where they usually lose, and you yeah, never know. Maybe the psychology is there. They might be like frustrated. But hey, remember these guys? We couldn't score on them the last game. You know. Maybe Manchester United has Bruno and has has Rasmus, and they feel like, listen, last time we were more compact, now we could attack. You know, yeah, you yeah, never yeah. know what could happen. It's a rivalry game. Be fair to Manchester United. Even though we haven't been great this season, we are still a dangerous team. When in our moments, we could we could show up, and if the players turn up, you never know what could happen. It's a big game. Yeah, no, of course. I mean. They, I mean, if it, if, it, if it was Anfield, right, there would be a totally different ball game. But this is a home turf. Um, he was asked about the crowd and he was urging the crowd to get behind the team. So why wouldn't you watch the game? Like, you know, this is the one fixture that I look forward to. This is war. This is Liverpool, right? And I've been getting shit from my brother who is a Scouser fucking supporter, right? You know, he's been giving me grief, right? <laughs> my big brother yeah. is a Scouser. Yo, my buddy, two of my buddies, one is an Arsenal fan, the other one is a Liverpool fan. So for me, I'm getting grief all season. But you know what? Oh. I stand, I'm stand, i standing my ground because you know what? When they were in sixth last season and they were fighting it, I was giving him grief. It's how football goes. Just as much as you're excited to win, you have to be able to hold an L. You know what I mean? It's just the balance. <sighs> Oh no, I'm not gonna hold the L because I have a gut feeling. Some, I'm, yeah, I know that footballing gods exist, you know, but I know for a fact that if if something's gotta give for Klopp, it will be the FA Cup, right? He's deep into Europa League. He, I think his focus is to win the league, right? And Europa. And Europa. So that would be like you know, yeah, that'd be something like you know, that's his one song, right? This is mm -hmm. the final dance. And he, he's got his players firing up because he's leaving, right? And even the kids that he bring, brings in, like, you know, my God. You know, it's like nothing ever happened, like, right? you know, because they've been playing the same same style. The under-18s has been implementing the same style for nine years, like, you know. So if somebody goes missing, you just pluck one in and, you know, it's like for like, like, you know. 100%. So they've been carrying this team, and it's deeply impressive, like, you know, 100%. Yeah, I mean, listen, as a fan, when you look at Liverpool, you look at teams like 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 Man City, Brighton, 
they have that, that, that structure that we are looking to build, rebuild. You know, we were the example initially in the 90s with under Alex Ferguson and, and, and Mr. Gill. But now it wasn't, it's not the case after a decade of, you know, poor management and mismanagement behind the scenes. So when you look at those teams, they have that, that structure where they have profile for profile replacements yeah, in yeah. the squad. Yeah, they have yeah, Mavericks. Yeah. And they have a scouting system that has been scouting for that system for over five years. Yeah, true, true. That's very I mean, th this is the only thing that we can look forward to because things are about to change um, if everything falls in place, right? So we will no longer be that uh, 11 years of the torrid, you know, no clue what we're doing. Like, you know, just buying short sellers without even matching the, the style of play, right? And that's a big difference. But if I look at Liverpool kids, you know, never heard of Bobby Clark. Never heard of Bradley, McConnell. These are talents, right? What I've yeah. seen. And that is that is so typical. Like when I see Klopp, he reminds me of a Sir Alex Ferguson. He stole everything, right? He's re he's read his book. You know, he's his biggest fan, right? Like, you know, if you're good enough, you're young enough. Um, you know, if, if you're good enough, you're old enough. And, you know, he stole the Fergie time to Klopp time, right? 100%. He's adopted everything. Yeah, we've got to get it back because it belongs we to the United yeah yeah and then he's you know then he's gonna leave so basically liverpool will be on a rebuild cycle so depending which manager they're going to recruit they're going to have to recruit the same manager that plays the same style of gag and press football don't you reckon rock and roll football yeah so but if they do recruit like a xavi alonso let's say to liverpool there will be a total different transformation in terms of style of play wouldn't it it would be more like tiki taka football it, it's kind of like a mix between, but the formation is different. They go to because he plays basically with a back three, you know. Yeah, it's he basically does. A back three, like five back across three. the midfield. The midfield, the two are just basically wing backs, really bombing up and down. It's like that old school formation Milan used to play with back in the day, you know. Yeah, but I like, you know, I like a back three. Why not? You know. Yeah, I mean, a back three is interesting. The formation is formations are always interesting. You know what I mean? Whether it be a four four two, four one two, one two, four three three, three four three, mm. five three two. All of those formations are pretty interesting. It's just how they work, the players, how they affect it in the system, how it works, and it would be interesting to see how they play if they if they do do that. But at the same time, you know, it's not going to be, you know, just smooth sailing when they change their manager. You know, that's if Klopp leave because you never know. The guy might sign a contract and stay on if he wins the league. You never know. Euphoria could change things. At the same time, you know, it's not too bad looking at the situation with Eric Ten Hag because, you know, I, I feel like this manager has dealt with a lot, a lot of pressure. You know, some most of it coming externally, some of it internally. You know, you had so many different sagas this season. Maybe we get a season without the sagas with some new players in the squad. Yeah, 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 yeah 100%, 100%. And you we're, know speaking, we're, spe we're speaking like, you know, some people call it delusion, but you got it like, I'm a bloody Manchester United fan, like in a hardcore. I never want us to lose. And if we lose, I'm getting so pissed off for days that it hurts, right? But let me see what the comment section is saying here. Big up to you. We've been rumbling here. What you're saying, your wife is a Liverpool fan. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously, compost. compost. Jesus, really? How did you manage really? to do that compost? Well, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, just being married is hard enough. I was celebrating my eight years ten, anniversary ten. yesterday, right? Ten ten, 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 Mick. You know, that's that's the only thing I could say. As a guy, you just do some crazy things. Is be a ten ten situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So ten, how do you manage one, that? Ten, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. Okay. Um, a different thing is to have a big brother that's a Liverpool fan. I don't see him that often, but if I live with my wife, I see it 24-7. She's a Scouse supporter. Oh, my God. I remember Terry Lewis, he's, uh, his new girlfriend, his missus, the American guy. What's her name? She's an Arsenal fan. Yeah, and she's course, an Arsenal fan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and big up Terry. Like, you know, but I've seen ever since then, he's been tweaking a little bit more for, for the Gunners. Like, But in a way, he, he speaks a lot of facts. Like, Gunners has been playing amazing football. You, I cannot lie, right? Um, Liverpool, as much as we hate them, they play good football, right? Mm. Arsenal plays good football as well. And this is kind of the style of football that I like to see. Big up, Stephanie Griffith, M&M's in the house, 14 likes. Jesus Christ, what do we have to do to get those likes up? What's going on? Is everyone lazy? Press yeah. those like buttons, otherwise we will get, you know, a Deutsche Police coming, knocking on your door all the way from Mark's house. Yay, Deutsche Post. <laughs> right? 
it's friday after all right you know it's friday it's one of those days and it's it's kind of warm out so you know what i mean it's not too bad you know it's it's a good it's a good situation today Enjoy. yeah you think that uh, Jolly saying, I mean, he thinks that Klopp is getting greedy. Oh, 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 I want four trophies before I leave. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. yeah I mean, it's good if he was to say that because now you know that Liverpool is going to be thinking that they're going to be high flying because, like, like the journalists, everyone thinks that everyone's going to walk over Manchester United, everyone's going to walk into Old Trafford and beat us down. And you know what? To be fair, in the last 10 games, I don't mind if that's their attitude coming into United because you know what? They will leave, they will leave complacency. Because yeah, they'll be yeah, overconfident, yeah. thinking they're just gonna do us one over. And yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. Always be saying, United, maybe we haven't been that team last last season or the season before, but we are that team in general. And I feel like somehow it's gonna be a shocking end to the season. Maybe United grab top four, win win the next ten games. You never know. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Sometimes maybe good. Sometimes maybe shit. And that's the way the season has been. So you just have to believe. Or we go with Arsenal as well. Like. It's a disgrace. That's what it is. A disgrace. I can't even disgrace. begin to, to talk about Arsenal right now. I've been, you know, my buddy, he's mad at me because when Arsenal played Porto on the, on midweek, I said, I said to him, I was like, bro, how is that not a penalty for Porto? I was like, bro, how did the referee let that foul go and you went on to score a goal? Like... Those things happened yeah, in the yeah, game yeah. when we played them at the Emirates, and it all went Arsenal's man. way. And I'm man, like, the, the the game of the week for me was uh, Atletico mid, uh, Atletico versus Inter Milan. What a game of football! I mean, you could talk about Simeone being a pragmatic, but he dug deep, and he there there was like the street fighters. Everyone on that stadium was basically rooting and crying afterwards. That what a game of football that was! It was you know? a good game. Mo Mo wasn't happy though. Mo was hey, Mo wasn't happy. No, Mo said they missed. It. Well, they did miss. You know, they had like about three or four clear cut chances. They should have put it at the back of the net. But yeah. at the same time, Mick, it's man. I hear people talk about Latour Martinez, and after oh, what I saw in that game, Mick, I'm telling you now, Mick, I never want to hear this guy being linked to Manchester United because you oh, know what? Oh. That's the disgrace. You oh. as the <laughs> Was painful to watch. Three in a row, you know, Mick. Three in a row. Bro, he was sponsored by Fly Emirates, Fly Better, right? They had to be Fly Emirates, bro. Because that that stuff was definitely soaring into the car park. Somebody went home with a foot with a match day ball. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, unbelievable. I uh, Mo, if you're watching, my condolences, brother. You know, and um, uh, he got got destroyed on the live, bro. Everyone was messaging him. Some and uh, <laughs> Ramadan Karim to you as well, Mo, and all the Muslims out there celebrating. You can hear now where I'm sitting, they're calling for Sohar. It means it's time to eat, right? It's it's, a, it's time to eat. And, um, you know, it's it's a holy month. So, but bro, that pen, Jesus Christ. I mean, that, that, what was he thinking? He must have got to his mental pressure. Like, you know, he was just overcooked. His legs yeah, was he gone. Was like, he was like, I'm going to bust the net. Bang! Oh my god! Yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah, yeah. Back too much. <laughs> he leaned too much, much backwards. Maybe he had too much baked beans, like you know, heavy in the back. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But, hey, you know, guys! Yeah. With the balance coming in from what from what Ten, Eric Ten Hag was saying seriously about the players coming back from injury that might be available for the tie against Liverpool, it gives me some more confidence because if if Aaron Basaka comes in, for me. Dalo shifts. Dalo stays on the right. Basaka goes to the left. Yeah, yeah. Because I t- I've seen him did, play on the left. Did you watch my video this up. morning, you bastard? <laughs> did you cheat? <laughs> really? Yeah, All mate, right, you guys. Have to always call it out like that, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, shut up, Mark. <laughs> Score prediction, then straight away, fuck the lineup. What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying 3-1 United. I'm going with a Mick Ruby special. For some reason, we're that's what I'm saying. We're going backwards. Let's do this the right way. Oh, 
sorry for trolling Mark, uh, 100%. Mark, I add you to the stage because you've been doing a little bit of a cheating, having you watch my morning video. And exactly what I said, uh, I think we will put on the best team out there because this is pretty much the best team that is fit at the moment. And I said exactly what you just said, you know, because Dalo had made that right uh, back position his own. He's already in customized. So, so I would put Van Bissaka over there to the left, 100%, you know. Yeah, but you but know the only thing mm. I was thinking I'd bench Rashford and start start Anthony in this game and bring on Rashford in the second half. I don't think so. Ten Hag wants to win this. So I've gone with this simple analogy. Why change a winning formula in the back, right? Onana, please forgive us for, for saying bad things about you. We know that you cost us the Champions League. That was one of the questions. Dig at the uh, manager at the press conference. We know why we analyze the game, but he's been paying back his credits right now. He's been keeping clean sheets, been bloody one of the men of the matches every single performance since then, since he came back from AFCON. But I go with Varane and Evans because that's been our strongest uh, centre-back partnership at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Delo it's been solid. Van Bissaka will come back in because that gives us a little bit of a balance back four. Um, midfield doesn't change. I, I, I think Scott McTominay will sit the bench as a you know bench player. You know what I mean? So you will see Maino, Casemiro and Bruno Fernandes. Now, I think that Bruno needs to put in a captain's performance here, right? Now, be the you know, playmaker, right? It's important that we get hold of that midfield, right? Because... What they do in rest play, they are very good at setting up traps and presses, and they will attack us, right? So we need to be resolute with Maino and Casemiro being dog fighters, right? Mm -hmm. Just be dirty in there. Rashford, maybe he needs to have another 30 shots on tequila to have 30 shots on target tomorrow, but he, he won't be dropped. He will play. Uh, Zivo play. And Ganacho on the right, where he's been doing very, very well, right? And of course, big man is back. Big man, Rasmatas Hoyland. Do you I, think he I will just, start? Now? I think he will come off the bench. Sorry, I just think that's why I said I will put Anthony off the left because I feel like Rashford is going to start. Hoyland is going to come off the bench. He hasn't played, you know. And I, I, if you know Ten Hag, especially with the performance that this young lad has given so far this season, he definitely won't want him to come on and play a full game and be injured again. He would want him to come on and get missed and get himself ready for the first Premier League game coming in two weeks, which is also, you know what I mean, a big game for us because we need to win that one and then go to Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, man, come on. You have a Darwin Noodles who actually starting to find his form. Like, you know, he's he's been doing a hip um, surgery. Like, you know, he, he used to have two left feet, but now they actually replaced one. So he's got one right foot and one left, and he's shooting right now, and he's finding the target. He's been recalibrating this little robot, to be honest. And you will have Salah and uh, Darwin. So I think the fullbacks needs to be on full alert, right? Who is the better one to track Salah, in your opinion? That's why I'm putting Aaron Van Bissaka there because AVB, I, spiders, yeah, spiders, put that tackle on that guy. Spider. Yeah, put that tackle on him, man. You know, yeah, like, I, like when, when, yeah. when, whenever you know, like I would, I would say this: much. Salah is a very good player, very difficult to contain. But whenever there's a a defender on him that puts the tackle in on him, he gets frustrated and then he starts doing erratic things. And it takes away from his game. So I would put, I would definitely be putting Anwar Ban Basaka to mark him. And I would leave Dalo on the right. Let him deal with Nunez, with Diaz. Because you know what? Yeah. I feel like Dalo and Diaz would have a better battle than Aaron Ban Basaka. Yeah. But uh, do I get your blessing? Do you get my uh, lineup? Um, yeah, would you, I would agree, agree with that. I would agree with that lineup. You know, my only concern is that I'm worried Rasmus might come off the bench and he might start Rashford. But other than that, I would have probably picked something very similar. Oh, cool. we this. have world peace now, ladies and gentlemen. Me and Mark Nurse are coming to an agreement. When did that happen? God, I don't know. Listen, Mark, I, I, I'm not nervous. Uh, come what may, you know, it's a, it's a game of football. It's FA Cup. And, you know, we see magical moments in FA Cup, like, you know, I, I believe we can do a number there. I certainly believe. And you have to believe, right? And, uh, you know, what's what's the point of going to war if you know that you're going to lose, right? So you 100%. just play your game. At the same time... But we know, we, 
Yeah, but we know they're going to come at us. Yeah, they're going to come. And that's what you want. You want them to come at you. The hype has been real these last few weeks. And yes, the youngsters that they've brought into the squad have shown up in the games that they've came on. And yes, Liverpool has been showing that consistent performance for most of the season. But let's not forget, there have been parts of the season where they went in and they played teams like Luton and they barely could have, they barely got a goal. You know, it took them more than 70 plus minutes of game time in order for them to either equalize or come back. So for me, they can be got. They're weakened at the back. They might have Kanate and, and Van Dijk. But you know, Carl Brandley is not the he's still a youngster. He's very talented. And yeah, of I course. think if he's up against a Rashford or or even an Anthony, he's, he's gonna have some trouble at some point. So, you know, yeah. I think it's a more even game than people are letting on, and that's mostly because I feel like United are getting a balance in their defense for this game, and that is the key. Well, listen, I you said it, you know. I uh... You know, I just don't want to give up. Like, you know, I just do feel like, you know, if Hoyland is now back, we've been missing that number nine. You know, he was on a big run. But the thing is, what worries me now, Mark, he's been out of action for two, three weeks, right? Uh, will he be rusty? You know, that's the thing, right? Um, but, hey, why should we bloody be worried? This, this is us. This is Manchester United. We're playing at Old Trafford. We know that they're going to press us. We know they're going to try to, to do the best. But we just need to play a game. Why Ten Hag say it in, in this press conference as well? Like, you know, we know that what they're playing, we, we just have to look at ourselves and let the crowd be with us as well as the 12th player on the pitch. 100%. Because at the same time, if you look at, if you look at how the team is performing right now, I mean, it's not that bad. We won the last game 2-0. People say that, you know, if not for the penalties, they, we would never have scored a goal. But if not for the penalties, you know, the guys would have scored if they weren't fouled in the area. You know, yeah. it could have been different. We should have probably scored more goals in that game. We had more chances than than we, we converted, which is usually the case. But at the same time, you know, remember, we have two young players that are leading our line this season in Rasmus Hoyland and Garnacho, and they are both under 22. So give them time. Give them some, give them some space. Give them some patience. You know what I mean. I think the attack will come good. We have ten more games, and with the bolstering of players coming back from injuries, only going to make the team stronger and more confident going forward. So yeah, all right, guys. Uh, let us know in the comments section. Do you reckon we can do a number? And do you reckon we could um, wipe that big shiny teeth of Jurgen Klopp, the the prosthetic aesthetic teeth? He went and done. I want us to stop Jurgen Klopp. Liverpool needs to be stopped. And please let us know what you think. What is your score prediction? Let's do this. Radio Mark has already started. Mark said 3-1. He actually went with the Ruby Rubico Classic. Jack Reacher 8885. Big up, Ratchy. He's thinking what I'm thinking, 3-2. But if Trashy lose Manchester United, nil 3 This is so important. I'm, I wouldn't say Trashy. I have a responsibility to towards a wider audience. I don't like to call players names, right? But he hasn't been that good. Rashford needs to be on his A game tomorrow. And all of these senior players need to step up, you know, they need to be fired up. And I believe that tomorrow, Liverpool coming to town, this is the big one. That, you know, if you're Manchester United, Mancunian, you will bloody love to play this game tomorrow, right? So I'm this saying, yeah. So people have been watching my video. They say 3-2. But I've gone with extra spice in here, guys. I've done a little bit of a spice. I know you hate it, but it's a knockout stage as well. So you got to be penitents involved. So i I done a little bit of a tension here. One nil, or it will be one one full time with pens, or two nil or two two with pens, or three two, or a ruby classical, el classico, a three a one. So, what do you think? Are you changing your stance, my friend? No, I'm keeping my score line three one. No, no. <laughs> I love yeah. that confidence. No, guys, place your bets. We're gonna do this. We hate. Uh, doing predictions so we believe in footballing gods some people believe that this wheel is been tampered with let's see if Klopp has been here tampered with the JavaScript code let's do this 
I think it's going to be pens there. Three, two. I said three, two. Yeah, well, come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Two, two. freaking nil. Bro, don't Bro. be surprised. Do not be surprised. Because let, let, let me say that. I'll just say this. I've watched United all season, and I don't know if anyone else is watching with me, but United always gets the first two cracks on goal against the big teams, the top six teams. Man City, first chances on goal. Both games, we got them. Arsenal, first chances on goal. We got them. Tottenham, first chances on goal. We got them. Both games. Aston Villa, both chances on goal. First games, two chances each game. We had them first. So I'm just saying, guys, if United could be clinical on Sunday, with the fact that we, if you look at the games, go back, check the reports. Statman Yali's there. I know he can prove me right. That's He'll come in shortly. Statman Dave. No, the Yali, Statman Malmi. Oh, yeah. He'll come in just now with the stats to show it. Bro, I, you know? I don't know you. Listen, I am not too confident about you. I think somebody jinxed it. I, I don't think that we're going to have listen, a clean sheet. No, no, I don't think. No, I, you, I, you myself, listen. Be real. <laughs> I am. I myself actually don't think we will get a clean sheet, but I, I myself think that if we could be clinical on Sunday, we could definitely see ourselves being up one or two nil in the first half. Come what may after that. <laughs> Dude, I think it would be a, in that case, it might be a two one. I mean, if it's going to be a tight one, it might be a 1-1 one, one, uh, extra time and we will clinch it. I think it, you have a Scott McTominay coming off the bench and does the hero. Like, you know, I need a hero. Maybe Ahmad might come off the bench. Maybe Anthony might be the guy. You know, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not, the problem for United is not that we don't create chances. It's just that we're not that clinical. We yeah, have to have a defensive. With defensive, we need to be sharp. And we've been good defensively lately. But we cannot have like you know concede thirty shots like you know we we, we gotta be that you know we got we gotta we gotta between the the defense the rest defense you has to you cannot have those gaps against Liverpool you need to be compact yeah you, you know what I'm trying to say right we've been letting people running through our midfield and just having shots right so yeah the defense is important if uh, Van Bissaka is playing. He will pin pocket one of those. I mean, it might be noodles, or he might be, you know, Mo Salah, Super Mario, bro. You know what I mean? Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, boing, boing. Like he looks yeah. like Super Mario. And if we can contain them, we'd be good. Subosly would play 100%. McAllister would probably play. So our midfield better, better be sharp. Like, you know, I don't know if end of story will start, end of, but uh, we just got to look at our game and don't let them play the game and don't. You know, play towards the Klopp game. Just play your own game, Tanag. You yeah. know, do not do your man marking. Do your high pressing game, right? Make I those bastards, he... make those bastards run the socks off, right? I feel he was going to do something quite similar to what he did against Liverpool in the last time when we played them. The only difference is that Bruno is in the squad, right? Last time we were sorely lacking a, a creative outlet, so maybe he right. puts, and he tells Bruno, listen. I don't want you to create 20 chances in the first time. I want yeah. you to create five. Right? Yeah. Recycle the ball and create five chances. Anyway, we should see, guys. It's been one hour soon since we started the stream. We covered the live press conference. We heard the questions. There were some questions to led to believe, like not direct questions, my mask, like go hang yourself kind of thing. And uh, we're just looking forward is... What the clock is ticking 72 hours away until kickoff. A look block, a low block against Liverpool will be deadly. A high block against Liverpool. FA Cup comes to United. Maybe next year, need to do something in the middle. And that's what I've been saying. The middle. The middle, right? In Big the up. middle. In Big the up middle. Yali. Big up. Uh, by the way, uh, what are you saying here, Jamie? Before I close the shop, I make it Sunday, not tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Did I say that? Sometimes, you know, Mick had had too many coffees, right? It's not what you're smoking and what you're drinking. It's just too many coffees. And it's Friday. And, of course, I'm gassed up, like, you know, because me, 
Liverpool, ah, it's war, right? It is war. Big up crew, big up Danny as well. Guys, listen, beautiful people, thank you for tuning in, everyone. If you're watching this in retrospective, don't forget to smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed, do it right now. And we should see you later on this evening. Hopefully, me and Jarvis will be back on doing a good vibe show and also puppy hour, happy hour with puppy as well. So, Mark, wie geht's? Alles gut? Ja. Sancho is staying in Dortmund. Yeah, geht es gut. That would be great, you know, if he stays, because in my honest opinion, I only am worried about if we're going to get 35 or 45 million for him. And that, for me, is breaking even. Oh, yeah, yeah, listen. Listen, I have a premonition. I have a prediction. In my crystal ball, I see Casemiro, the decisive goal, a header from Casemiro on a set piece. Boom. Nice. Boom. That's it. Booyaka. Beautiful people. Thank you for tuning in. Guys, lovely to see you all. Lovely to speak. First stream of the day. Thank you, Mark, as well, for coming in. The Deutsche Jamaican. No, the Deutsche Trinidad and learning Deutsche Sprechen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pulling your leg, man. I was absolutely enjoying <laughs> bantering you today, man. It's all good. It's all good, you know. So, How's your Deutsch lessons you know, going, Germans? Listen, oh, it's going good. It's not too bad. Like you know, I have I have classes like for an hour today, so it's be fine. Every day mm -hmm. else is like four, but it's cool. It's cool. I'm I'm learning lots, and maybe by so, next week I'll I'll give some like little snippets okay. in German so everyone could enjoy the the language. Okay, at least you know you can go out and order a beer right now. Definitely, most certainly. It's much the end beer. Alles macht eines gutes Brie zu brauchen. Klaus Thaler. Big up, people. Thank you for tuning in. It's time to close the shop. See you to the next video. Glory, glory, Manchester United. And don't be afraid because we're going to get this over the line, I believe. Bye for now. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MEFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.